Let's bring it back together. I want to explain to you how Java is different from some other programming languages. Let's take this expression right here. And even though I've kind of suggested by writing it this way that A and B are variables, imagine that they're more complicated expressions. So here is how some programming languages work. They take this expression and they evaluate it. Then they take the B expression and they evaluate it. And then they do the AND operation to see if they're both true. And if they're both true, and this happens to be part of some larger if statement like this, only if they're both true will this code execute right here. But that's not the way the Java Virtual Machine works. Here's what Java does instead. It evaluates this expression and then sees, oh, there's an AND here. If this expression evaluates to false, it doesn't bother to evaluate this expression. The reason why is that it already knows that the whole expression is going to come out to false, so it doesn't see the value in evaluating this B part here. So if this part fails, it doesn't continue. Now why is that important? It's important if we look at the practical implications on the code. In this situation right here, this term inside this larger Boolean expression is being used as a guard against an accidental divide by zero. If we put the guard to the left, it functions properly because when the guard detects that there's a zero here, we're not going to ever try this division here. It won't even get there because there's an AND operation in between. So if the divisor comes out to be zero, this if statement is abandoned and the else clause is executed instead. But if we were to put the operands of this AND operator in the other order, this guard does not function as is needed. Why? It's too late because the division by zero has already occurred here if the divisor is zero. So that's why when you put this guard in, it has to be on the left of the end statement.